of all, quite a few people say to me that they would like to read music more efficiently. They read it okay, but very, very slow and pedantic. So for a start, let me give you an idea, or one or two ideas, on how to read more efficiently. And the first tip is to read notes as part of a pattern, rather than saying to every individual note, oh yes, that's D, and that's F, and that's E. Don't work them out individually. Learn to follow the patterns. For instance, if the music goes from a space to a space to a space, then you're going next door but one. All spaces look, and then the space goes to the line, C goes to D, space to the line means that it goes up next door, and then next door but one, and look, you've got a whole series of next door neighbours. So with this little tune, I would only read two or three notes individually. I'd probably read the G, and then the C, because they're some distance apart, and from there on in, it's space to a space to a space, line, all the way down, next door neighbours all the way down. Do you see what I mean? I wouldn't read every note as an individual. And another good tip, try to read at least one bar ahead, so that while I'm playing that bar, my eyes are reading that bar. And then when I get to there, I've got a whole minimum plus those three beats to get ready for what's going to come next. It's exactly, reading music is exactly like driving a car. Try to drive a few yards ahead so that if any hazards occur, such as little runs and awkward flats and sharps, then you've got a couple of extra beats to get ready for them. And speaking of flats and sharps, here's a good idea that was sent in to me by an organ enthusiast. He said, hey, I write all my own music, but whenever there should be a black note, such as a sharp or a flat, I colour the note in red. It's so easy. So the black notes are white and the red notes are black. Work that one out. For instance, look, there we're in the key of A, which is something of an awkward key. We've got the three sharps, F sharp, C sharp and G sharp. Every time a C sharp occurs, he colours it in red. Red C sharp or a G sharp down there. C sharp, G sharp. That's a good tip. Red for the black notes. And finally, there's pieces of music where you can't relax and read the notes because you're so busy working out the repeat signs. Repeat to there and there and back to there, down to the bottom and halfway through. We've all seen them, we've all struggled with them. I had an idea. With my idea, you have to first sit down and work out where the repeats go. In other words, the fact that you go from there to there and back to the beginning, you have to work them out. But my idea was then to use the letters of the alphabet as points of reference. All you need is a pencil. I've got a magic pencil because I've written them on already. Let's drop that down there. Here we go. We write on the letter A at the beginning, obviously, because that's where we start. And then we go from A all the way we play up to B. And then from B we go back to the beginning, which we'll call C this time. A, B, C. And we follow the letters. C goes to D, but this time we don't play the first time bar. We stop at D and jump straight across to E. E goes all the way down to F, and from F we go back to G. There's another repeat sign there, look. G goes all the way down this time to H, which is DS Alcoda, Dar Signe, that means. Dar Signe from the sign. Where's the sign? It's that one. It's like a little letter S, or like a dollar sign with the line through it. So that get, we'll call that H, uh, I rather. I goes all the way to J which is the coda sign, and then we play the coda, which we'll call K. K for coda, that makes sense. So do you see what we're doing? We're using the letters of the alphabet to point the directions through the repeat signs.